Welcome to the Heads Together podcast. I'm your host, Jill Mokes, and I have a blooming, fabulous episode lined up for you today. I'm joined today by Jennifer Evans, aka Zen Jen. I consider her to be now a dear friend, and she is an absolute luminary of transformational expertise. Like that? I love that. She has over a decade of experience and she works with purpose-driven female entrepreneurs who are craving sustainable success on their own terms. And they want that success with balance, freedom and joy. Isn't that great? So Jen helps people transform their overthinking. She helps them to stop second guessing themselves and not feeling good enough. With a magical blend of powerful and insightful guidance, Jen leads her clients from a place of feeling overwhelmed and stuck to embracing their inner power and igniting crystal clear clarity by tapping into their personal guidance systems. I love this personal guidance systems, right? And you'll understand why I love that so much, because in the episode today, Jen shares with me her very simple, very powerful, punchy definition of what spirituality is. I think you're going to absolutely love this conversation with her. Jen is also a freedom seeker, a lover of life, activator of play and possibility. I really love that. I love Activator of Play. Brilliant. She's a best-selling author. She's also a podcast host. And if you haven't listened in yet to her podcast, which is called Exponential Potential, which she co-hosts with the amazing Claire Oatway, then I really recommend you head over and have a listen to that. She interviewed me on her podcast a little while back. So check that episode out too. She's also a retreat leader and a Reiki master. So she is an all-round Wonder Woman. I love her. You're going to love her. If you go to the show notes in today's episode, you're going to find a free checklist that she has provided for us, which will help you create space and feel balanced and aligned every day. So head there, head to the show notes grab that copy of the checklist. And in the meantime, let's dive into the conversation. This is a really rich conversation I think you're going to love. Welcome, welcome to the Heads Together podcast. I'm Jill Mokes and I am obsessed with cutting through the noise when it comes to growing your business. Each week via intimate coaching conversations and inspirational stories, I share what it really takes to get the results you want in a way that feels right to you. I am all about attracting higher ticket opportunities, building authentic relationships and creating the abundant full fat version of your dream business. I mean, how many of us have beavered away creating a light version of what we really want? The thing is, I honestly believe When you're outstanding at what you do, there is no limit to what you can achieve. So, are you ready to put our heads together and make it happen? Let's go. Hey, Jen, how are you? I'm really, really well, thanks, Jill. Mm. So happy, so happy to be here with you today. I know it's going to be a really juicy conversation. And it's just lovely to be in your energy anyway. Oh, oh, thanks. That's such a nice thing to say. Love that. And back at you. Thank you, darling. That's another one of the things. That's another one of the things to go on the pile of things that British people can't really say. I need to actually write a book about this because most of my clients, like, you know, are American and I I kind of keep absorbing their phrases. So back at you is really not something that someone with a Mary Poppins type accent can get away with. It sounds very funny. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I know. Oh, so good to see you again. I love our conversations, Jen. And I'm really excited because now I get to share you with my audience. 
one thing that I don't talk about on the podcast that much mm. is kind of the stuff that I see you as my absolute expert in, which is really the balance, alignment, spirituality, all of the things that feel really outside of my comfort zone a little bit because Mm -hmm. it's not something, it's not the area I work in. But equally, lately, I've really been been more drawn to this side of things and I guess I'm I'm exploring I'm exploring all of this and I know you and I are going to explore in a lot more detail thankfully but I really wanted to have you on the podcast because I think that a lot of my listeners are a bit like me they're quite focused on their businesses they are filling their heads with all the business development books and the sales and marketing stuff and the branding and the all of the kind of practical business building blocks. Uh And I think there's a bit of a lack of balance. So I really wanted to have you on the show today to kind of talk to you a bit about this balance and alignment in business and how what that does for us, what changes when that happens. But if it's okay with you, I want to step back a little bit and talk about your journey. And, you know, perhaps you can start off by just telling us the potted version of who you are and how you got to what you do today. Spirituality is not all about being woo-woo. There's so much that's involved and it really helps us get into alignment and it, for me, it creates so much ease and flow. It kind of takes away all the pushing and the struggle and the pressure we put on ourselves and makes success so much easier to come to in our, you know, in such a beautiful, flowing, feminine energy. Mm. Who doesn't want that? Exactly. So, mm. Very, very briefly, I came from the corporate world, been in the corporate IT industry, so very male-dominated, very pushing, stressful, high-pressure sales, marketing, and then into training and consultancy. And I always knew that there was something more. I always wanted to do something with more meaning and purpose, and I'm sure your listeners can relate to that. Absolutely. Yeah, and when I was little, actually, I didn't know I could do it. I was able to heal my mum's migraines. So I would soothe. They wouldn't be completely gone, but I would soothe them away. I would help her relax. And I didn't know what I was doing. And I just put my hands on her head. As soon as I start talking about this, energy starts up between my hands. I didn't realise that was different until I was older. And then um, I realised that I was different. And I shut that down because... My brothers, I love them to bits, but they would, they would always take the mickey out of me. So they would, for the American audience, they would just tease me the whole time. And I just felt, and I grew up with three brothers. So I was the only girl in, you know, I have a much older Mm. sister, but I was in a very male dominated area in my growing up, but I was teased so much. It kind of squashed it. Yeah. And then in the corporate world, you know, it was a very work hard, play hard, busy, go, go, go. You're either working or you were partying. Oh, I can relate to that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Same. My background's the same. Right. So I squashed it and I worked really hard and I did very, very well, but I just felt so unfulfilled. So I made a big decision and decided to As I said, healing was always there for me. And I always enjoyed massage. I would always massage my friends. I was interested in aromatherapy, oils and crystals, that kind of thing. So I kind of started getting back to it in my early 20s. And I actually came away from the corporate world in my 30s and made a decision that I wanted to do something more meaningful. I started with healing and massage and reflexology And at that point, my spiritual journey started as well. I'd been married twice. Relationships were always a sticky point for me. A lot of low self-esteem. 
<laughs> Jen, we are so similar. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of low self-esteem. I was always looking for love in the wrong places. And I realized there was a pattern. And it's like, hang on a minute. Who am I attracting? I'm always attracting the wrong type of relationship for me. So I looked within. Teachers started appearing. When you're ready, the teacher will appear. And I kind of really delved into my spiritual journey and personal growth journey at that point because I just had enough. Yeah. I moved back to the UK with my dog, £2,000 and two divorces. I'd been living in Canada for 10 years and I came back to the UK. Uh, when was that? That was 2013. And I started again. and. I then sort of, I had already been helping clients with coaching and sharing what I knew. Mm -hmm. And then I've, I've just continued evolving and growing and investing in myself, in my business um, and in my own spiritual journey. And I, even when I went back to the UK, I was still attracting douchebags that were either emotionally or physically unavailable. Um, yeah. So I went quite deep. I knew what I wanted in a relationship, but the reason why I was attracting unavailable men was because actually I wasn't ready or I wasn't feeling worthy enough. So there's a lot of layers and there's always a lot of layers. Um, right. And it wasn't until I stopped behaving in a certain way. So I realized that even though I knew what I wanted, my behavior was still allowing men that were unavailable in my life and as soon as I said no to that and I stopped behaving in that way and accepting that and saying you know what you can't give me what I want within a week to two weeks I met Dominic my my wonderful wonderful partner and we now live in Italy loving our life and he is the most wonderful perfect man for me and we both came together at the right time Oh, Jen, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. But I want to just pick up on something you said. That was a conscious choice. Oh. You made a decision to behave differently and everything changed. Yes. And I did the same in my business. So my question then is that because here's where I think sometimes there's a misalignment around the perception of spirituality. I think you made the point of saying, you know, it's not all about the woo woo, but I think there's a lot of people who think it is, who still think it is. <laughs> and what you've just said is that actually, no, it was about making a decision. It was about making a choice, which are, are really practical words. Those are, those are action words. Those are things you did to change something. It wasn't you sitting, you know, holding a crystal and thinking spiritual thoughts that made that happen. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was practical action that made it happen. So I guess what I want to explore with you then is where does the spirituality come in or where did it come in for you? to be able to, to to get you to that place of being able to make different choices? I think, so spirituality is is very personal and very unique to each person. And it's actually, it's a journey of self-discovery is what it is. Oh, oh, that's a, that's a mic drop moment. <laughs> Because I don't think anyone's ever given me such a simple definition of spirituality before. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, you get oh. the you get the connection, and you get people channeling information, which we can all do, by the way. Um, you know, people talk about our guides and our angels and tarot card readings and mediums and crystals, but ultimately, it's a very personal journey of self discovery that connects to the deeper aspects of yourself and that's first and the universe right so that also we all have deeper elements of ourselves so it's about really reconnecting and you talk a lot about your authentic self 
this is what we do. We delve deep and we connect to our authentic self. We, we delve into who we were born to be. So we go beyond all the protective mechanisms, all the barriers, the past hurts, the past trauma, you know, all those belief systems that have been built up over our lives from our experiences, from what we've heard, what we've yep. seen, what's been told to us, how we've been treated. And we we go back to that, whether you want to call that your inner child, whether you want to call that your inner goddess, your soul, your true, true self. So for me, that was the beginning part of that journey of self-discovery. And coming from a place of love, compassion, grace, and kindness, first of all, for myself. For yourself, from yourself. Yes. Yeah. Because there was so much shame attached and guilt around how I behaved in the past, mm -hmm. especially around with men. I think uh, women carry a lot of shame. And also, we also carry. As women, we carry our ancestral beliefs within our DNA. That's fact. That's biology. Um, and if we look back through our, our own personal life, we're also carrying the previous, you know, our, our mums, our grandmas, our great grandmas, our great great grandmas and beyond and further and further back. Um, and you think about how women have been treated for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, that's in our DNA. So that journey of self-discovery is also about healing that. And it doesn't have to be heavy or it doesn't have to be traumatic because, you know, we learn how to love ourselves, to truly, truly love ourselves and to have such huge compassion for our journey and our ancestors' journey. Oh, I love that. And my, my question that's come up from hearing you say that is, what is the key to doing that? Where do we start if we want to do that? If we want to go deep inside, you know, where does that even start? Is seeing what you're drawn to, seeing what you, resonates for you, because for everybody, it's different. Well, it's like you said, it's that personal journey of self discovery so of course it's not going to look like no two people's journey into that spiritual side of themselves is going to look the same is it no it makes complete sense but the one thing you need is space is to create time and I know you know you do that with your rewilding your business you can't get there from being busy juggling everything, feeling responsible for everything and doing everything for everybody else. You have to make that choice. You have to make that decision of, okay, I want to get to the nitty, not the nitty gritty, but I want to go in within myself. And I, yep. I do actually want to learn how to love myself. You're right. Without space, that's never going to happen. No, because, and what's interesting, a lot of us, us women and men do it as well but we we get caught up in other people's dramas we make ourselves busy we we're constantly on the go because it's we're fearful of the quiet we're fearful of what that will bring up yes I'm guilty of that a hundred percent I am guilty of that so I will fill spaces it particularly if there's something going on in my life that on some level I know needs attention, mm -hmm. but I don't want to deal with it, I will fill every bit of space, whether that's with work, with my family, whatever it is, I will fill every bit of space so that there's no way I can address the elephant in the room, if you like. I can really identify with that 100%. And that also becomes a habit. We don't sometimes realise we're doing it because it is scary and it takes courage. But it's also normalising that fear 
because it's just fear. It's not going to hurt us. Yes, we might get upset. Yes, it might bring up some stuff. But what's on the other side of that is so worth it. My life is completely different. I love my life. I love me. I love my partner. And it's not just because we live in Italy. I mean, that's a. That's, <laughs> Although, um, obviously, I do get life envy every yes, time I speak yeah. to you. But apart from that. <laughs> but I, before I met Dom and before I lived in Italy, I loved myself and I loved my, my life. And that's why I did meet him. But you don't have to always be in that place to, to do that. You need to allow yourself to feel those feelings that come up. And it's very, very helpful if you resonate, if you're drawn to have somebody help guide you through that, you know, and it's, it's it's really simple things like changing your perspective and stop taking something so personally. Mm. Mm. It was never about you in the first. It's not about you. It's about that other person's problems, issues, insecurities. If it keeps happening then look within yourself of how your behavior is. But most of us need guidance and support and encouragement because it it is a courageous journey. It's a courageous journey, but it is the path to this feeling of being in balance and in alignment. And can you speak to that a little bit more? You know, so what does that feel like? How does that actually influence our daily life when we are, when we get to this place of feeling in balance? When I was working in my business and we first moved to Italy and I started taking my business online before I left the UK, but because we were enjoying our life so much, this, uh, this is an example of being out of balance. Um, we just moved here. Um, we didn't need to worry about finances. And I literally kicked back for a year and, and then COVID hit as well. But I, I just, I was enjoying it so much, the mm. freedom. And I didn't want one of the hidden beliefs. And this is something else that sometimes you need someone to help you with is to really uncover those hidden beliefs. Cause there's, there's a few of them. And I didn't realize this one was there until, cause I still have a mentor and a coach. I'm still part of the community, you know, to continue to grow. But what was uncovered was, Yes, I was working in my business, but not anything like I am now. And I was expecting it all just to turn up for me. And that's where the action comes in place. And one of the reasons I was I sabotaging myself because I didn't want to lose the freedom that I had. I didn't want to lose the time that I was spending with Dom and our dogs. You know, I didn't want to lose that space. But it was too much the other side because, you know, money runs out unless you do something about it, unless you've got piles and piles of it. And what I didn't realize, one, that that was a hidden belief that in my business, it's going to be too much hard work and I won't get the return on investment. You know, I won't, you know, posting on social media every day. Now that doesn't appeal to me so much, but I just wasn't doing anything. I had clients from the UK still that were online with me, but I wasn't growing my business. And because I believed that if I did, I'd become too successful and lose my freedom, where in fact, it would actually give me the freedom I was looking for. Because it's my business, my rules. I get to set how much I want to work. I get to set the people I want to work with, that I can play in my business and be creative. That's also another element of spirituality. So I wasn't taking the action. So the balance is between, it's finding the balance between, and we'll talk about getting into alignment in a minute, but it's allowing the time to get yourself in the right space into alignment, followed by getting clear on what you want to achieve, getting crystal clear on your vision and your aspirations, and then taking inspired action towards that and following the next natural step. So there's no pushing, which is what I then went to do. 
because I was pushing so much before pushing I've got to get this done or I need to get this marketing place in plan I need to get this I need and it becomes really overwhelming when you've got so many things to do whereas when you tune in and give yourself that space to ask what's next for me you know you need goals you need vision you need aspirations to go for but you also need to be in that space where things come to you with ease and flow where you are in alignment and then you take the action that feels good to you when I'm talking about feels good it doesn't mean that it doesn't feel uncomfortable no absolutely and and I think this is another kind of misconception isn't it that if something doesn't feel absolutely comfortable it must be wrong And I don't believe that at all. I think sometimes the absolute right path for us isn't the comfortable path. One of the things that you've mentioned a few times that I just love is that when you talk about balance in terms of the balance between being and doing, and I think this is what you're alluding to here, isn't it? It's like the space to be who you truly authentically are, to craft the vision that you truly want for yourself and your business but also feeling into that before you start the doing part which is taking the aligned actions that are going to get you there and I think this comes back to this space thing again so it's almost like a lot of people do things the other way they actually just almost like bots they do stuff in their business And the actual sitting with it, feeding into it, what would feel right for me? Not what's right for everyone else, not what's what all the gurus are telling everyone else to do. What would feel right for me? That bit gets missed. So there's so much doing, not enough being. And that's when this out of balance happens, isn't it? And this misalignment. Yes. Uh, And also being in alignment with who you came here to be, not who you think you should be from all the, whether that's coming from your parents, whether that's coming from cultural, you know, societal pressures. Again, it's that, that's why you need to be getting that place of space to really, you can journal through doing that because you can't, if you're too busy doing, 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 you won't hear the answers that are within you already. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. This is something that I've come to quite late. You know, I, I've always been a doer. So I am like, I don't procrastinate. I kind of am a person that just does. And it's only kind of in the last, really the last couple of years that I've learned that I have to listen. I have to make space, have to take time. So. I completely identify with what you're saying. A phrase you used just now was about connecting to who you came here to be. Can we unpack that a little bit? Yes, we can. So if you come from a place of curiosity as you listen to this and have an open mind, when we come here into this world, this beautiful world, planet, so we, we're born with natural abilities and we see that you know someone like Beethoven let's just take Beethoven for example or somebody that's just innately good at something they don't have to try hard they don't have to work at it they're just good at something Mm -hmm. and then there's things that we're drawn to that we enjoy doing that we like whether that you know it could be you could be a social butterfly and you love talking to people it could be that you really like helping people, whether that's through listening, whether that's through therapy or, you know, whether that's through massage. There's certain things that are always there as we grow up. And then we've got our personality. And then we've got our families and the people that are come into our life that's family. Um, and then, then there's the experiences that we have through our life. So, We're set up to 
be able to help con- or contribute or be a catalyst for humankind. And that can be on a small scale or a grand scale. And when you say a catalyst, how are you using that? Donald Trump. <laughs> it comes straight to mind. <laughs> So somebody that shakes people's trees, I mean, I shake people's trees, but in a positive way, but somebody that's so far and so undisconnected Mm. and so ego-based, they create Mm. a opposite of that. Uh, Stars are born from chaos. Uh, Yeah, stars are born from chaos. Mm. The Big Bang was seemingly chaotic and look what that created and that can be people in your life that can be a catalyst so in relationships for me I learned it's they're either the one or one of the ones because I believe there's many soulmates for us whether that's in a yeah a, a, a platonic relationship a family relationship or a sexual relationship there are always people that will catalyze you trigger you so that you can then either learn from that or do it differently so I was saying men in my life most of those were catalysts helping me realize what I didn't want and from that place I then flipped that round and realized actually what do I want and that really helped me create ease in relationships about not feeling rejected all the time because rejection was huge for me And I realized, actually, they're showing me, they're giving me contrast. They're showing me what I don't want. So therefore, this is what I do want. And I learned to focus on what I do want. Because the more you focus on what you don't want, the more you'll receive what you don't want. Because that's where your energy is. That's where your focus is. So a catalyst is somebody that gives you an opportunity to do something different. To be different and to learn and grow from it. Got it. So this, you know, what you came here to be, it, it's a combination of things then. So it's, it's that combination of all of the things you love, the things about your personality, your family, your people, and all of the people who touch your life, who are the catalysts are, are informing who you came here to be. Yes. Yes. And. I know a lot of people say this. Jim Carrey is one of the people that say this. The universe happens for you, not to you. Mm -hmm. So there's always an opportunity to learn or grow or what you're going through is going to help other people. Yeah. Who knew Jim Carrey would be so deep? Oh, he is. He's incredible. Yeah, he's very much about high vibration, gratitude, love, compassion, positivity. And it's not all rainbows and unicorns and fairies. It's important to allow us to feel those feelings and not bury them and pretend that everything's rosy when it's not. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's something else that I think people have a perception of or a lot of spiritual people have a belief or that they have to always be in joy. Yes. They always have to be positive. And that can be quite off-putting, particularly for someone who's coming into just exploring this, perhaps this deeper side of themselves. Like you put it, I love how you describe it as this personal journey of self-discovery. For And I think there becomes that, especially for people like me, who are a little bit black and white, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, it's lovely while it's lovely. And then the minute that something comes up to disrupt the thinking, it's like, well, oh my God, it must be rubbish because nothing's working. I don't feel in flow. <laughs> and and that's okay to not be in flow. Yeah. It's okay not to feel 100% happy, 100% joyful, 100% positive. Because otherwise, because then we're not learning and growing. There's no contrast. Mm. And I'm sure at some point in the next, you know, millennia, we, as a human race, we might get there, but right now we're not. And this is, this is such an important time for shift and change and to start looking within yourself so that you can create more flow and ease in your life. It, going into a place 
you know, we're, even though we're in the world right now, and this is a catalyst, COVID was a catalyst. Mm -hmm. The struggle and the e economy of both North America, um, of the Western world, you know, the UK through Brexit, mm -hmm. that's a massive catalyst. And mm -hmm. all of it is calling for us to change. The Me Too and the Black Lives Matter, that was created from catalysts and, you know, things happening, situations that created this, that were catalysts and created this positive, incredible movement. Yeah. And I want to circle back because I didn't actually answer one of your questions that you asked, which was, how do people start doing this? And I said, first of all, is create space and to go within and start asking yourself your own questions. Mm. A lot of second guessing and self doubt comes up around this. So it is helpful to reach out to somebody or maybe read a few books or watch some things on YouTube, see who resonates with you. Whether it's somebody like Brene Brown, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Gabrielle Bernstein, Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. There's so many mm. people, but don't look to them as a guru. Don't look to them that they've got all the answers. Mm. Look to see what resonates with you and take what feels right for you. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Yeah. Listen to our podcast as well. Sorry, there's, you know, yes, the podcast. Exactly. Exponential well, Potential. I definitely listen to the Exponential Potential podcast because that is a really great way because what I love about your podcast is that is a balance. Mm. That is a real balance of topics, of approaches, of opinions. So yeah, if you're listening to this podcast, definitely check out Jen and Claire's, Claire Oatway's podcast, which is Exponential Potential because it is a great podcast. I'll link to it in the show notes as well, for sure. I love what you're saying. I think this is one of the instances where actually, you know, don't pick a lane too quickly. Feel into it and see, like you say, see what resonates with you. Try things on for size and try on different authors, different speakers, different pieces of content, different, different ways of consuming that content as well. Something's going to feel good and enriching for you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I suppose I, one of the things I'd love us to kind of look at specifically is my audience really are business builders. You know, they are entrepreneurial women. And I'm, I'd be really interested, Jen, in your take on what does this mean for our businesses when we, when we work on achieving balance and alignment? What can that mean for us? When we are connected to ourselves on who we truly are, when we feel that space of self-love, compassion and grace, the fear goes away. The barriers of protection layers are broken down and we become open to receiving, um, whether that's ideas or solutions, even simple things like when we feel worthy and self-love, the fear diminishes so much that we're not worried about being seen and putting ourselves on camera oh so true I mean practice and doing it has a big impact on that but being again being first and and, and focusing on what benefit what contribution am I making so taking the focus off you and putting it on the contribution that you're making. So you're coming from that place of love. And the more you come from that place of love, whether that's for yourself or humankind, clients, the less your stuff, your insecurities and fears and self-doubt matter because you're making your contributions much more important. So there's that element, which is huge. Because you stop caring about what other people think because you're focused on making a contribution. The other thing is, you know, it really helps build resilience. As entrepreneurs, you know, we have setbacks or we have some overwhelm going on whenever we're going to elevate or enhance or, you know, we, we juggling responsibilities and or something not quite working out the way we want it to. Mm. 
But when we're in tune, when we have that sense of knowing that all will be well, which is something that happens when you're in tune with your spirituality and alignment, that balance and alignment, you don't get caught up in the, oh, I wish it had worked out some, you know, I wish this had been different. I wish that this had been successful. And you stop focusing on the negative and you move forward. You're able to, again, learn the lessons from that and move forward. So, you know, when you're in a place of uncertainty, you have this sense of trust and knowing all will be well. Yes. So resilience, it helps you stay grounded and present because you're being in that place. So, yeah, it helps create a calm and resilient mind. It does. It really does. And I so resonate with that. The other thing that's just come up for me as well is it also really helps with decision making and it stop, it really limits the procrastination, the overthinking, the agonizing over every decision. Because I think when you've done the work to get more aligned with your true self, it's very easy to see what decisions are right and what decisions are wrong for you. Would you agree with that? Yes. And it goes deeper than that. It goes into using your intuition and your inner guidance systems, which is your body. Are you leaning in to something? And that takes practice in terms of intuition. But intuition is another really powerful key in terms of creating alignment and getting you know, trusting your decisions as you follow your intuition. And that's a whole other subject, you know, about how you do that and how you trust it. But your intuition, we all have that. It's again, it's an innate ability. And when we quieten down our mind, when we sit quietly in nature, whether we journal, you will receive information, whether that's an idea, a solution, whether that's a conversation you have with somebody, whether that's a, a chance meeting you have, whether that's something that comes up in on your internet searches, you know, there'll be something that you kind of lean into a bit. That's part of your intuition and guidance systems. So when you learn how to use your intuition, it's a really powerful asset in decision making. I agree. Uh, it's something I talk about with my clients a lot is learning to trust that intuition. And I think I've often come from it from a place of being brave enough to trust your intuition, cultivating the courage to trust your intuition. And actually, I think our conversation today has really helped me widen that a little bit more now and see that the spiritual side of things this personal journey this that side of things actually helps us to do that it's almost like we don't have to leverage as much courage and bravery it becomes a little bit more natural to trust our intuition yes and also one of the ways just quickly one of the ways you trust your intuition is start observing it and being aware of it and noticing when you follow your intuition what happens and when you ignore it good point because you create evidence then you create proof for yourself there's many times where we think we can't trust ourselves but actually when you delve deep and you tune in you know for example in a relationship I knew that relationship was never going to work I knew deep down I did know but I ignored it because I let my heart but not my heart from a love point of view, my heart from an ego and sexual point of view, lead the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you chose to do something that wasn't in alignment. Yes. And when you observe and you become aware, you start realizing that actually you can 100% trust your intuition. It's just understanding when it's your intuition and when it's not. That's such a good point, And I completely agree with you. I think when it's truly your intuition, you can trust it 100%. But you're right. It, it is. Yeah. It's understanding when it is that. And sometimes we need help with that, Jen, don't we? Absolutely. That is something that you can absolutely help people with. Yes. And 
I mean, this has been such a rich conversation, which I knew it would be. And I'm so grateful to you for just sharing all of that insight with us, because this is really important stuff, actually. For anyone who's on that brave journey of entrepreneurship, it's really important to have balance and the alignment that we've been talking about today. If people want to kind of learn more from you, find out more about you, where can they go? They can go to my website, which is thezengen.com. And that's thezengen.com. I'll put it in the show notes. I've got a gift that they can download, which is all about how to create balance and feel uplifted and inspired and create that space on a daily basis. It's a six steps, really simple checklist. Oh, brilliant. Mm. That's wonderful. And also in the near future, and that will also put you, if you want to, put me on my, on your mail, um, put you on my mailing list, which will then keep you up to date with programs and courses that I'm running. And of course, you can work one on one with me as well. I'm in the process of redesigning an online coaching course training program around sustainable success with Mm -hmm. balance and alignment. (laughs) Um, Wonderful. And allowing you to really embody freedom, joy, and balance on a daily basis. Oh, who doesn't want that? Mm -hmm. so what i'll do thank you jen and what i'll do is i'll pop the link to your free resource in the show notes listeners i urge you download the resource and like jen said that will get you on her mailing list because i know you've got some really exciting things coming up so i i want everyone listening to be able to stay in touch hear all about those things and thank you so much jen for your generosity today and sharing all of this with us really appreciate it you are so, so welcome. And I really hope that your audience has, has gained some new insight and a, you know, a fresh perspective on how they can be and do. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Jen. I will speak to you again soon, but bye for now. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that getting our heads together this week has filled your mind with what's possible. If you love the show, would you do me a massive favour, please? Would you leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts? It would really help me put more heads together, reach more ears and expand more minds. Until next week, bye for now. Bye.